It's Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Nima. How are you doing? I'm fine. I love the blue. Thank you. Uh, Miami Creations. <laughs> Amina, turning her name upside down. But, yeah. um, I wanted to talk about, yeah, I said that I would talk about the mental health conference the entire week. And Chris, today was supposed to be Chris's panel. Chris Arrow, remember our former women's uh, show lady? I remember she Chris. was yes, I and I liked her, her perspective to addressing stress as regards to mental health. You know, accepting stress as part of life instead of us, you know, the negative way we used to see it. That's what but is. As, yes, what is. accept it as part of you know your, uh, leverage to grow. But on my way to work this morning, Keke on the Badagri Expressway on one way, mm. on one way. So imagine me thinking I'm on the right of way. And having to step on my brakes several times because the kekes would face you. They don't have brakes. If they even have, they're not clearing. And you're, you're almost killing somebody. And somebody should do something. They, they are like that on the Badagri Expressway. They are like that on the Uroshoki Expressway. Who authorized kekes and korokbeis to do free one ways everywhere in Lagos who did that? So the essay on transport, the commissioner for transport. Well, you see, whoever it goes is, again, local government, because the essay on transport cannot come to those kind of enforcement. areas. That's why local governments are supposed. That's why I'm to mentioning the areas. Yeah. I'm mentioning the areas so they can deploy those who would see to it that, because there's no traffic, you just need to go and turn and come right. back. But you want to quickly do it sharp, sharp, yeah. and go and. The greatest come. weakest, the weakest link it's, in this and it's dangerous. The weakest link in governance is local government. You I'm need to you. strengthen them because they are the ones are to ensure no one ways, you don't um, park on, the, on those inner roads. You know, those are little things that local government officials should be enforcing. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, Mariam? I'm doing great. I'm good. Um, today is World International, uh, International Water Day. So it's just a day to remind us, drink water, but although mm -hmm. <laughs> the day just to remind us that um, water that is important, you. we should be careful how we use water, do not waste water. But then also for our health, it's very important that we right. drink water. And, you know, I'm an advocate for just water drinking. Less of the sugar, more of the water. Mm. Yeah. You know I don't like drinking water. <laughs> uh, no. It makes me dizzy. Really? Oh, God. <laughs> but I, I, I want to to talk me. about it as a resource. She said, she said she, it yeah. makes her dizzy as a resource. Yes. Water is a natural resource. And yes, it That's is. how I tell my kids, because they waste water. Yes. Leave the tap running. You're washing one cup, one cup. And you have used one paint bucket exactly. of water. Exactly. So don't, don't let's not don't wait. Why you were paying for that? That's exactly. Explain to them that you know we are unprepared. The light you generate, yeah. you're just wasting water. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm BC? doing amazing. I'm cool. Uh, my kids are writing their exams. Two of my girls are a bit under the weather. I've just uh. been managing them, pampering them. Please just go to school and write your exams. Um, holidays will soon be there so that you can rest. But hopefully this weekend they would rest and have a good time. Okay, I'm there. Right. And you? So for us, the ladies of your view are still having our walk. So our 10th year anniversary is upon us by May 29th this year. The ladies of your, your view will be 10 years old as part of our activities towards that. We're planning a walk, which starts, uh, it's going to be on April 1st. Um, the start off point is here at TVC. We're going to be inviting <clears throat> lots of he for she's especially. We're inviting a lot of men to join us because we've realized that a lot of these walks, women participate in walking, but we need our male counterparts to support women to show that indeed that you believe in equity, equity in business, equity in the home, equity in family, and equity in, 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 in our entire social system. So we're inviting all men out there to join the Ladies of Your View April 1st for a walk for equity. And all the women also, please, there'll be a promo running very soon on our pages. Well, of course, join us. It's going to be 7 a.m. We'll be leaving. Come early. The walk starts exactly 8, but 7 a.m. is the call time. Mm -hmm. Come early. Park your cars is safe here. And then from there, we walk on CMD Road back and forth. And um, we'll have a few health talks. Our sponsors will also be there. Our supporters will also be there to say a few things. So please join us as part of our activities towards our 10th year anniversary. Okay, let's go on a break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. President-elect election is over. It's time for healing. Washington Post rates polls high in spite of hitches. We will deliver red line before May 29th, says Sonwolu. Woman said son, wife and children ablaze. 
Anxiety over results persists in Enugu, Abia, Adamo, and Kebi. No cash in banks despite CBN's one trillion naira in circulation claim. Digital economy operators exempted from 5% excise duty. And declare me winner of all cancelled election will be urges tribunal. All right. Okay. So are we starting with? We have the Lagos State Governor is assuring Nigerians that um, the red line, that's the real mass transit red line project will become a reality by, uh, before May 29th. He had gone to inspect the project sites in Yaba and Ebutemeta, where the stations and the vehicle uh, bridge overpass uh, are sited. And um, he expressed satisfaction with the level of work that's going on there. And, um, you know, in answering questions, he says that um, he, he, he's, you know, he's confident that before the end of the, their first term, the project should be ready and there will be test runs like they're doing right now for the Blue Rail. And um, he also used the opportunity when he was asked about uh, the sort of, you know, what went on during the elections and the sort of divisive comments that were going on around the elections. And he says that um, um, that is a regrettable thing, you know, the divisive rhetoric which came up. But he's assured residents that the he um, healing process has begun. Um, yeah. So very soon we'll be celebrating another completed project. <laughs> Yes, so um, <coughs> the CBN governor, uh, Godwin Imifili, came out of the Monetary Policy Committee uh, meeting held um, at their headquarters in Abuja yesterday and said that the Apex Bank has pumped in money into the uh, money banks for circulation. And he said that uh, the currency in circulation is roughly close to one trillion and the CBN continues to pump the newly designed currency into the market. So he went ahead to speak up um, again, saying that they need to reassess uh, to know whether the currency in circulation has attained the optimal level so that they are able to put measures back in place so they don't allow a lot of money to be outside the banking system like the issues we had before this monetary policy came. And he said that um, they are also going to be instituting withdrawal limits, you know, just to reduce the currency that's outside the banking system. Then he went ahead to praise the uh, fintech operators who they have you know, tried as much as possible to increase their capacity so that we can have online transactions and apologize to Nigerians, though they didn't get exactly what he said in the apology, but he apologized saying uh, to Nigerians for the pains that they have gone through while trying to carry out electronic transactions across several banks. I would have wanted to hear him tell us how this has impacted positively or negatively in the economy. I would have wanted to hear him say something uh, about people who have lost their businesses because they still went ahead to ask a lot of business people and they said businesses have dropped. A lot of people are not able to make payments and then a lot of businesses have crumbled and crushed. Nobody's talking about, we're talking about how much Naira is in circulation. And the banks are saying that they don't have money. They're still cutting 20,000 now, uh, 10,000 tomorrow, 5,000. There's still not enough cash for people who really need to have access to this cash. So the president-elect has been said, <clears throat> was saying yesterday that um, he's urging Nigerians particularly to, to start the healing, especially now that politics and elections are over. He has said that the political class must rise above the differences and team up with him to strengthen and the value strings that bind us together as a nation. He particularly stressed that politics are over, the time for politics is gone, time is uh, for the nation to build so it's time for the nation to build, to begin building a tax beyond one individual or a section of society. He also said that we need every hand on deck. I am ready to work with you all as a president. He also said that he's, he will be a worthy partner they can trust and rely on him and to bond the whole nation together. It's a unity of purpose and renewed hope for the betterment of our blessed country and beloved people. Uh, he also said that he's pained by the cases of ethnic slurs. Uh, reported in some local locations across the country that are physical and verbal assaults um, are unacceptable and unethical to, demo uh, to democratic ethos. So we must ensure that begin the system and, uh, of healing. And I think that's the right thing to do. That's the right rhetoric we need now as we're trying to move past the elections. Okay, so the Minister for Communications and uh, Digital Economy, yeah, Professor Issa Pantami, says that the president has approved that the um, digital sector, sorry, the telecom service um, operators are exempted from 
the 5% excise duty going forward. It says that as regards the implementation of the Financial Act law is concerned, they are now exempted from the excise duties. And it says this is because already they're overburdened by over 41 categories of charges, taxes, and levies. And this is based on the recommendation of a committee where he, the executive vice chairman of the National Nigerian Communications Commission, the Minister for Finance, the chairman of FIRS, um, the, um, all of those members were members of a committee and those were their recommendations which the president has approved. And so the digital sector, the operators of telecoms will be exempted going forward. I think 41 different levies and charges is enough, truly, you know, if we don't want because okay. it will pass at the end of the day to the consumer. Okay, let's move on to the punch. Protests rock Ogun, Abia Nasara over poll results. Economists fault MPC over 18% lending rate. Ogun ex-permanent secretary wife found dead in Lagos home. Mm. FG loses suit to recover 70 trillion naira loot. US Hills INEC threatens visa ban over violence and intimidation. Article will be two others as tribunal to nullify Tinubu's victory. Okay, which story? Are we starting with the punch? Yes, we are, and they uh, have this really sad story. So they said a former and ex-permanent secretary in Ogun State, um, Adefemi Agbeolua and his wife, Olufimilayo, were found, their bodies were found in their home here in Lagos State. On, they, live in, they lived in Akeja and Allen Avenue. They said that this, the families were home during the governorship um, elections and um, the person, the person that was you know talking to reporters said that, they, and then they got a report that they had been killed, they had been murdered. So they went into the house and um, they found their bodies in the pool of blood, the man and his wife. But they also found the help that's always helped them. They're, they're an elderly couple; they're in their seventies, and she's been helping them. And she, um, although still alive, had. Um, serious and they say critical injuries, you know, and uh, she's in critical condition in hospital right now. Um, police is investigating. Um, their son also made a report. So to say who did it exactly, they don't, they don't have that, but they said people came into their house and attacked them. Mm. They found um, sticks and they also found machetes and they said an, uh, an ID card also was dropped uh, at the scene of the crime. Hopefully, they are able to find who did this and bring right. them to book. Mm -hmm. And the souls, mm -hmm. their souls so, rest in peace. You know, and um, there's this um, a federal government suit of over to recover about 70 trillion naira that has been um, struck out of court. So, the um, Honorable Justice Peter Lifu of the Federal High Court in Lagos struck out this charge that the federal government, the, from the office of the Attorney General, brought against 29 banks or 29 bank accounts. According to them, 70 trillion naira was allegedly stashed in about 29 bank accounts by looters, and they had gone to court with about 17 commercial banks mm -hmm. and the Nigerian Ajip Company Limited and the NMPC were listed as a, you know a, a respondents in that case, and they had gotten a temporary, an interim order to forfeit since 2021, but they continued the case in such a terrible way that the judge was forced at this time to just strike it out. They would not show up in court. The, the judge said they handled it. It was what, what they call diligent, lack of diligent prosecution. They handled it in the worst excuse for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and even when they changed their counsel from Mohammed Ndarani SAN to Femi Falano SAN, it was still the same narrative where the lawyers were not coming to court at all. And so we don't know if they, except they can refile this matter whether this 70 trillion naira will be recovered. And I, don't, I hope that it's not some, some form of uh, corruption also happening to, to the law yes. again. Mm. It's just so sad. That yeah. So um, the US government uh, yesterday reiterated its decision to impose additional visa ban on those responsible for a large scale violence that trailed the general elections in the country, especially uh, in the governorship and state assembly elections that happened this past Saturday. So um, the U.S. Embassy in Nigeria listed some states that they found the violence in Lagos, Kano, among others. And they said that um, their 
they were expressing deep concern over the intimidation of voters and suppression caused by the violence. And they made a statement. So members of the U.S. diplomatic mission observed the elections in Lagos and elsewhere and witnessed some of these incidents firsthand. The use of an ethnically charged rhetoric before, during, and after the gubernatorial election in Lagos was particularly concerning. We commend all Nigerian political actors, religious and community leaders, youth and citizens who have chosen to reject and speak out against such violence and inflammatory language, affirming Nigerians' commitment to and respect for the democratic process. We call on Nigerian authorities to hold accountable and bring to justice any individuals found to have ordered or carried out efforts to intimidate voters suppress voting during the election process. And they are also considering giving additional uh, visa ban to some of these people after the government has you know, done due diligence, investigated, and then tried to prosecute the people involved. So four presidential candidates on Tuesday approached the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal, um, asking them to nullify the declaration of the uh, Bola Tinubu of the APC. Um, these four uh, from the LP, the PDP, Action Alliance and the Allied People's Movement. Um, they had petitioned the court that um, Tinubu was not duly elected uh, by majority of the lawful votes uh, that, that was cast. They also claimed that they were rigging in 11 states, and they also claimed that the petitioner shall now show that um, the computation and declaration of the result of the election based on the updated results were um, that, that the president-elect was not the right person. They also further in the petition said that the fact that uh, INEC violated its own regulations when it announced the results, while the, despite the fact that the, at the time of the announcement, the result hadn't been uplo uploaded or transmitted electronically, was a violation of the electoral act. So they're asking the, petition, the, the court to say Bola Tinubu's election was null and void. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So Tinubu sues for peace. We're here in Vanguard. Tinubu sues for peace, condemns ethnic slurs, election violence. <coughs> Obi Atiku others file petitions to nullify Tinubu's victory. Grandmother said son, wife and two grandchildren are blazed in Ondo. Polls, U.S. plans new visa ban on electoral offenders. How I curbed vote buying, says Buhari. Contempt, other courts to reject EFCC cases, over 250 lawyers tell NJC. Constitutional review, Buhari rejects bill on power to summon president and governors. Anxiety heightens over Enugu Abia governorship results. Kaduna train attack, FG docks <coughs> terrorist negotiator Mamu on 10 count charge, and FG exempts telecom from 5% excise duty. Okay, which story starting so with? The so I've got um, the federal government yesterday, they arraigned the Abuja Kaduna train kidnapper negotiator, Mr. Tukur Mamu, on a 10-count terrorism charge. I think we remember um, in September of 2022, he was arrested at, uh, in Cairo on his way to Saudi Arabia. Um, so he, the charges they say that have been brought before him um, are that he has aided terrorist operations in the country, and that investigations have revealed that he collected an aggregate sum of $420,000 from families of the victims, as well as the 21 million naira from another set of families of the trained victim. They said he also concealed funds he earned from services rendered to the terrorist organization in his residence. They're also saying that sometime in 2022, he received ransom payments, um, the sum of 500000 on behalf of Boko Haram terrorist group, group from families of train attack that were held hostage. Then they said uh, investigation also shows that um, the voice note communications he had with one Baba Adamu, who, who has been identified as a spokesperson for Boko Haram in relations to um, acts of terrorism. Anyway, the defendant is said to have acted in the breach of the Terrorism Prevention Prohibition Act of 2022. 
His lawyer is asking, though, that he be granted bail while his case is being looked at. And one of the things, because he says that he's sick, he's not feeling well, mm -hmm. and also that he has the right of presumption of innocence um, before, you know, and so that should allow him to be given bail. Anyway, the bail was denied, mm -hmm. and they said that they have all the facilities to take care of his ailment in custody, and um, right. that um, should go ahead and retain him. So okay. our president, President Mohammed Buhari, spoke at the farewell meeting with the outgoing United States Ambassador Mary Beth Leonard at the State House in Abuja. And he said he was completely satisfied with his role in the election process. He said that he told his people, any candidate that offers you money, collect the money, but vote your conscience. And that he had given a chance for a free and fair election, as well as non-interference as witnessed in the elections. Mm. Now he said he now knows that Nigerians are capable of picking people who they believe can work for them without anybody telling them what to do. And also the fact that there was this Naira redesign that didn't give the politicians an opportunity to have money to spread across. Also, they were not able to buy their votes. That also made it possible for us to have a free and fair election. And the remarks of the um, U.S. ambassador, the outgoing U.S. ambassador, she said she was happy with the progress uh, made in Nigeria-U.S. relations in the three and a half years. And he, she went ahead to cite examples of what they have achieved so far. Now Nigeria has a five-year visa, uh, you know, a regime. So when you're applying for your visa, you get five years instead of the normal two years. They are also uh, having a lot of collaboration in the security uh, space. Um, so supply of military hardware, including warplanes, soon-to-come fighter helicopters, and cooperation in the health sector, like we saw during the HIV and COVID-19 responses. And that Nigeria, um, the U.S. will continue to support Nigeria to grow in democracy and everything that they need. Oh, hello. Um, President Mohamed Bari refused to sign the bill that chooses to empower the National Assembly and State Houses of Assembly to summon presidents of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the governors to state assembly to answer questions on issues which the National Assembly or State Houses of Assembly had powers to make. Mm -hmm. And he, 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 according to the report, the uh, Senate president was just recounting that Actually, 35 amendments to the constitution was, were done. He has um, assented to 16 of them, but there are 19. And one of those 19 is this uh, bill that I just read out that he refused to assent to. He also um, said that he, he refused to assent to um, an alteration that seeks to compel persons to obey or comply with legisl legislative summons that uh, was... Uh, given out by any of the houses of assembly, by either the National Assembly. And these are laws. He said, but he also uh, noted that the president had accented to that which empowers the local governments and grants them autonomies and the um, uh, independence of the state houses of assembly. He had already signed that. So there are good signs to those that he signed. But this particular one, I would love to see. You know, I, I think the president, of course, will be looking at the clash with the section that provides immunity and how it affects the smoothness of running of office. But I don't think that, you know, just appearing before the House is of such an issue, you know. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on now to the Tribune. The Nigerian Tribune, Article B, APM, AA, file petitions to nullify Tenebo's victory. Um, Lawal of PDP defeats Matawale in Zamfara. Flawed elections. Nigeria has grown beyond military coups, says Washington Post. Wari exempts digital economy sector from 5% excise duty, says Pantami. It is my turn to be Senate president, says Carlo. Over 250 constitutional human rights lawyers ask NJC to direct all courts to reject EFCC cases. And Wari celebrates Elumelu at 60. Okay. Okay, so the... Um the court had given an order finding the EFCC chairman in contempt of court, which he refused to show or, or purge himself of. And so 250 constitutional and human rights lawyers have called on the NJC to direct all courts in Nigeria not to entertain any matter, any case at all from the EFCC until the EFCC chairman follows the law. And I think it's the right call. The EFCC chairman, as somebody who enforces, who is a security enforcer himself, should know better than to di uh, disregard any court in this country. And I hope that the NJC does the needful. 
Okay. Yeah. So, so um, Nigeria is ranked 95th happiest nation in the world. Really? Out of the latest edition of the World Happiness yes. Report. We have dropped. <laughs> yes, the report. Uh, we had dropped, Abi. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was expecting like 10th or 20th. Mm -hmm. What are the indices they use? Because I so don't know if they it have was this. released on Monday by the Sustainable Development Solutions Network as part of the United Nations International Day of Happiness, March 20. And <laughs> they focused on uh, happiness measured by evaluations and emotions, how they have evolved in crisis situations, okay. and how people's lives have improved, where trust, generosity, and supportive social connections have thrived. So those were the indices that... They use. So it assigns a happiness score on a scale of 0 to 10 based on an average over a three-year period. So I think we should work towards getting to um, being the first place. Finland is still maintaining the world's happiest uh, country in the world. But we will see the dance from, we still on TikTok, so we can assume. <laughs> the Lagos State red line. I don't have it already. Okay, let me I take it. One uh, of the woman, the grandmother, set ablaze. Uh, yeah, yeah, I had, so yeah, it, was, it was a really, really sad story. Yeah. Really yeah. Sad story. Yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah, I yeah. took, I took it, but somebody took it. Okay, so let me just yeah. establish yeah. it. Tell us what happened. Yeah. yeah. So, um, a couple and one of their children have been born to death in the fire that raised their residence at the weekend in Akpomu Akure, South Local Government Area. Uh, they said the second child was rescued in receiving treatment in the hospital. The mother of the disease was identified as Iforiti, uh, who reportedly claimed responsibility for the fire that killed the family. According to an eyewitness, she said he noticed fire in the house at about 2 a.m. and had to break the window to rescue the victims. So the woman, her son, Victor Oloro, wife, Rachel, and children, Toluwani and Blessing, were all in the house when the woman set it on fire. Mm. She said she got dry palm fronds and a little petrol and you know poured it all over the house and then set it on fire when she was arrested and then um, asked why she did that she said because the they were starving her they were not giving her food and that was why she did that so investigations are ongoing i'm sure you may have they to certainly something. can't give her food again <laughs> the senate chief whip That's is intended in ah you know the the drugs drugs are now. They know was important i just wants was to be senate oh. president yes. well, along with uh, Pabio and some other senators from the north and from he says, is, uh, no, from the north, from okay, Niger and State long, and Kano, okay, along with others. So, Apabio from the south, but he says that it's the time for the north, southeast, yes. and that he's also the time for, the, for a Christian Senate president from the southeast. And being an, a high ranking Senate senator, he thinks that is it's time. Now. I agree with him. Okay, that's all we can take on paper review. When we come back, move on to our hot topic of the day. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So this week we're still discussing the elections have come and gone. Uh, we saw we read a press release from the president elect saying that we must begin healing. And we also saw in the papers that our governor, um, Tsangwon Lu of Lagos State, has gone back to work where he's there um, inspecting um, the red line, which he promises that would begin before May 29th. So our conversation, therefore, is what are our expectations? So for the governorship elections that have been announced across Nigeria, um, the new governors and the, the re-elected governors, what are our expectations? What, what are those things? Aside from infrastructure development, how do we begin that journey of healing which has been declared by the present elect? What are your thoughts on it? If you can call us from all, all over the country, especially concerning your state in particular, or whatever state you reside in or you're concerned about, um, the numbers on your screen, what exactly should be the agenda for the new government that's starting um, for May 29th? The numbers are 081-270-536-8709-139076948. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect, please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. How do we begin that journey of reconciliation? Um, if I, going by what you said during the paper review, that all Jews or Kalu is saying that he deserves to be um, Senate president, and that's because... 
he believes that he has paid his dues and it, he, he used the same as Shivaju's tactic when he went to Ogun State. He, said, he, he also came be out to say, listen, he has worked and um, he's a Christian, he's from the Southeast, and it's only right for someone like that to be picked. So these are some of the rhetorics we're hearing on how to show equity across the nation. What are your thoughts, especially on that? I'm not sure which state you're concerned mm -hmm. about, but either state, Lagos, hey, or whatever state, I wish that what, is the, what should be the agenda? I really wish that the US person. governor in Edo so I can, <laughs> I can release agenda. So let's start with Lagos then. Well, let, let's start with uh, Lagos. But let me just finish on um, Ojozo Kalu's, um, you know, his, his pedigree. Yeah. So he's been in the Senate for so long and he's played the politics. So one of the criticisms against Obi was that, you know, they didn't, he didn't play the politics. He just jumped on the <laughs> Labour Party and the South East have not played the politics. But Ojozo Kalu stands out among the South Easterners in politics. He's always played the politics. He's always known which party has the influence and the chances to go there. He stuck to his own party. He contested in Abia North on the platform of the APC. He was able to get re-elected. He's stayed the time and he's, he's one of the highest ranking. If you look at the Senate right now, he's the chief whip. He's always, you know, stayed there. I think if you look at um, uh, those contest, contesting right now, Senator Babio, uh, Senator Ojo Zokalu still stands out. Then when we now bring the sentiments that, you know, mm. some of these devices, this divisiveness that we talk about here, he's a Southeasterner, full blood. He's a, 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 an experienced senator. And, you know, he's a Milo time. He's an Milo time. So I'd, I'd really love one. to see him mm. as a senator. But for Lagos, one of the things that I would love that mm. Governor Sonwolu starts to do with immediate effect is starting to go to those areas where... There were so much grievances about him. Talk about, uh, you know, address some of the issues raised, any credible one, because some of them were highly emotional. Mm. I didn't agree with all. But I live in Amuo, and the Amuo or the Fini people are the ones loudest. Them, Ojo, they are Jeremy, Felodu areas. And Etiosa. Where, where you, and Etiosa. So they, for whatever reason, think he <coughs> doesn't deserve to be in office. And some of the reasons are infrastructural. And we know that he's busy across the states. So it would be nice to finish up mm. all the projects that are ongoing. Some of them are on standstill. The old Dodger Road, for instance, they've been on standstill for a while. They, they were working very fast before the end of last year. And suddenly there's a stop on things. I see that they are still breaking the roads, but the areas that they have, they have you know, put concrete, there are other parts left. I'm talking of the old Dodger from um, Ileko bus stop in was my estate and so those are the things that they should speed yeah. up and yeah. complete so that at least the infrastructure just as he spoke to me will speak to the other aggrieved parties and I, I'll take the others later. Mm. Yeah. So what, what are your thoughts Miriam on this? What, what do you think the governor should do first? What are the first things yeah. you think he should do? For me I think what he has to do first is um, address this divisiveness that we saw towards <laughs> the elections. The the, neg the negative, and for me, it was not truthful um, rhetoric about the Yoruba Igbo relationship. <clears throat> we know that that conversation was just a political conversation. Mm -hmm. There's no how that is the reality of Lagosians living in Lagos. I mean, how many, how many families in Lagos you have a Yoruba father, an Igbo mother, a Yoruba mother, an Igbo father? I mean, we, you see people with three names in Lagos State. Muslim, Christian, uh, You know, Christians and Muslims. So I think um, this is the time to sit down. Although I know that the, the LP candidate is saying that he'll go to court, but whenever that is done, it would be nice to see them shake hands and just push and just realize that they are all together. They were all trying, um, running for office for the interest of Lagosians. And that um, whoever it is that, has, that is going to be governor now, they will work with him mm. to make sure that Lagosians, you know, interests are um, paramount, um, foremost on the agenda. It's, it's also important to understand that even if you're not the one in government, you have a role as an opposition to keep an eye. You are the one that will call out everything that is missed and everything. So for that, what you do is that you put the administration on its toes to do the best for Lagos. And people will also look at the opposition and judge you based on what right. you did as opposition. No longer should we be 
run, you know, you disappear in four years and then you come out and then um, in trying to garner support, you now start sowing seeds of discord. I would like to see that change over time. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is getting smaller and smaller. We're intermarried generations right. over generations. Right. You can count great grandparents who are from different <laughs> tribes in Lagos State and even across Nigeria. So this conversation that we have during election period right. should mean nothing, should not be something that comes up. So if you would have, um, you know, sometimes we sit down, round table, we have a conversation, right. we have representative in different um, parts of um, government administration from different tribes or different right. um, factions, right. that will help to push that um, conversation of unity right. in Lagos. Let me come to you, Busy. Um, I mean, just like she said, those town hall meetings are great, they are nice, well, you see, my worry is that, I think Nima always says that, it's only who, you can do all these things. But if I choose not to listen to you, I choose not to listen to you. So what do you think he needs to do, especially for mind transformation? Because these things don't happen just by one, one press conference or one town hall meeting or one visit. These are things that take time. So what can the government of Lagos State and other governments also begin to do to change the thinking and to earn back trust? He has a lot on his hands or on his table right now from what I see because it's not very easy changing the mindset of full-blown adults. It's not, like you mentioned, just one conference or one town hall meeting and you expect everybody will just accept what you have said. Um, it's important that you... This is the time to play the elder brother, right? This is time to play the father. This is the time to uh, put all pride aside, all ego aside and wear on the cloth of or the cloak of humility and go down to those um, uh, interior places those are grief like Miriam mentioned some of those um uh, Nima mentioned some of those areas go down to those areas and hear them out this is the time to listen and they will not accept you immediately but you need to be dogged about it you need to be consistent about it you need to appeal to their senses and their logic because the truth about the matter is we all want a greater Lagos. We all mm. want a greater Nigeria. We are all here to thrive and do businesses. Mm. And you need to, when I mean present logic, you need to put everything on the table. Mm. If we do not have a conducive environment, your businesses will not thrive. So we need to work together. And no matter how they reject you first time, second time, keep showing up in their faces to get them to understand. You have a lot of work to do on that part. And I pray that you have the wisdom. Mm. Your team also will have the wisdom to, you know, get these people together. And also apologize, you know. Um, a lot of people felt aggrieved that um, they were disenfranchised. They were not given an opportunity to cast their votes because some people were flogged away. Some people were, you know, beaten away based on the false rhetoric that some mm. people are saying something yeah. in that corner. It's time for you also to apologize on behalf of those people who flogged them, whether right. you sent them or not, so that it seems like um, you're coming or not. It seems like you have to go there genuinely right. from a place of truth that I am here to work for a greater Lagos and right. I need your support. <clears throat> to be able to do that because it's going to benefit right. us all if at we, the long if run. If we say humility, don't, do you feel that humility is on both sides? Oh, so of course. the governor can say, yes, I'm coming with that. But so the, the recipient mm. must also be willing to come to the table. You know what? Okay, yes, there were rhetorics of division, but yeah. we are also willing. Because it's not sometimes when, when the leader constantly comes down, mm. sometimes it, people take advantage of it mm. and it, it, can, it can cause a ripple effect. So yeah. we're saying that, is it possible that we also need the people to of course, yes. understand and come forward? You know what? I'm willing to have a conversation. Yes. These yes. are my grievances. Wait, wait. It's, they're they going to get there, mm. but the leader will have to lead them there. So when somebody is upset mm. and fuming, they don't, at that time that the Andrella Lil is pumping, you're not applying logic. So it will take you a bit of time mm. to simmer down and have an understanding. So is the leader willing to be patient for them to simmer down? Mm. That's where the point is. So of course, at some point, we expect that you, Seth, you are, uh, you are living in this place. You want it to work now. You have to calm down and listen. But at the time that the tempers are rising and fuming, mm. can the leader be a bit more patient? Now, that's why some people will say, we can move the conversation and wait a bit. We can wait it out. So that's why I ask also that God gives him wisdom to know when to go and when to step back. 
to know when to wait it out and when to push. Do you understand what I'm trying to mm. say? So, yeah. One of the things I know from experience is that when Nigerians see their leader, they are in love with him. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I, I was fortunate to be on the inspection of the Oworoshoki Expressway mm. with the Minister for Works and Housing on a particular tour, and we stopped at the beggar market. Mm. I was shocked to know that some people had gone ahead to tell the market men that you know, the minister was on tour yeah. of the construction of the road. And the way they humbly came out, and you know, Baba uh, Tundera uh, the former governor as he is, he stepped out, stood amongst the people. I st stood in a distance and I watched. They were in awe of him. Mm. They argued on why the, mot the parks in Lagos he was saying, these are our recreational parks. They cannot be marketplaces. Mm -hmm. And the people wanted it to be a marketplace. So they engaged each other, but there was no rancor. There was extreme respect from how they spoke to him. So I can be rest assured that the moment the present governor, Sonwolu, steps a foot in the trade fair or Alaba market, Nobody will attack him. They will be in respect of him. Because what they, what they want is inclusiveness. They want to see him, not only during elections, but they want to see him regularly seen to their issues in the market. Whenever campaigns come, we see opposition. We see how, you know, I saw how they were visiting marketplaces. Mm. Even though he was working and they were seeing the work, they choose not to see it because maybe they were not in sitting mm. in closeness with him. Right. Yes. So I know that it should be in that market. Okay. You should be talking to the escorts in that market. Yeah. They know how to quell the nerves. Yeah. They talk know to how to, people. Because just before elections, I drove into, because I have to use the bridge to get into the, uh, my own community every day, the bridge in the trade fair market. And I was driving, I saw a poster of him and the market escort put it up in a very frail looking something, something like that. I was like, ah, what's happening here? It was like, well, let's just put something so that the government power knows that we're there. But when it comes to voting, they are my neighbors. Mm. They don't vote like that. At the polling unit, all sorts of language and yes. words flying about the personality of the governor. And I kept saying, give him his credit. This man, ah, you know, know they fought for credit. that. You people were falling under that bridge on the crater now, just how many years ago. Mm. But nobody listened. So I think that it's now time to engage. Okay. Yeah. The it's escrow of that right, market. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. so you're so right. I've always had that conversation of saying that this is a two-way street relationship where you give your feedback and you also get you also as the electorate, the masses, the constituents, you also take your feedback. Um, one of the things that I saw that made me uncomfortable during the campaign season for, uh, with um, Governor Songwolu was that he heard the feedback where people were saying, we don't see you, we don't see you enough. And then we started seeing him in places. Mm -hmm. And people made that also a conversation to call him out. That is and no. yes, and no, not on the, they were like, oh, you see him at the mall now, you see him. But what do we expect? Do we expect to give feedback and the person should not work on that feedback? And when the person does, why don't we appreciate the fact that what you have asked for, the person is doing it. So um, also there's this conversation of um, we don't see him enough, we don't see him enough. And I realized throughout his, um, you know, this first term until election season, we have seen him talk about the work that he's doing. Even when he cannot talk of himself, you have his essay speak on his behalf. We were seeing the work that he was done. But all of a sudden, we went blind mm. because of election season. So if we want to be honest electorates and masses, we too need to say exactly what our issues are based on fact. I want to also use Desmond Elliott, you know, as an example of that rhetoric, false um, stories that were going around. Mm. Many people do not know, don't know Desmond Elliott as the representative for Surulere. They know him as the actor. They know him based off on the controversies that happened in 2020. They don't know the work that he's doing in that area. Mm. They don't care about the work that he's doing in their area. They haven't sat down with constituents to find out what work he was doing in the area. But we're just, you know, spewing out st um, stories that someone would say and you push it and push it. And no matter, you know, what is even more shocking is that no matter if you sit with them and say, hey, but this is what he did. For me that I live here, this is what I say he has done. They will say, never. And then we call you names for wanting to stand on the truth yeah. that is different from their own perspective. A... So as we also need to be factual, if you have a problem with your representative, with your governor, let it be based on fact. If it comes yeah. into your area, is it the roads, is it electricity? Let it be the reason, you know, that's the issues you should bring up. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is when you don't do that, 
you now open the door for the foolish conversations we're having about um, Igbo or Yoruba <coughs> because we had refused to base it on the so issues that matter. Even, even the government, let, 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 let me come to even the, the, what you said earlier about we always believe what we want to believe. In fairness, even to, let, let me speak for myself, Governor Sawolu did not come to your view for his entire period. Yes. I held that against him. And this is my way. We'll be going to other stations. We'll be seeing you there back to back. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the fact that he didn't show up on your view. Mm -hmm. I kept sending me messages, please, oh, we need to bring the governor to the state. Finally, well, after he now came in January, eh, hey, we Yonu see more there because yes. he has come on the show because we've been trying to get him up. We after, how do you say Yonu in English? You, you, we, we softened <laughs> towards softened. him. Okay. You know, we, because, because before then, we're like, ah, what's wrong with this guy? We'll be going to other stations, showing up there. Because he had, so the same thing we okay. just, just said. Certain people, some certain people feel that we've not seen him. Mm -hmm. He hasn't come to our area. We haven't seen government here. Once, once they show, or once the go, 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 government shows up, we then begin to realize, oh, he actually listens. But when that happens here, we don't care. Mm. Even well, we I don't have care. always felt he listened. Ah, no. Me, I cannot even sit yeah. on this table and say he, he never does listen. Even when he did Because show. when I used to, any day I say a thing is wrong, yes. and driving there the next day, I'm like, ah, ah, it's like governor is watching me. Yes. <laughs> so I felt... Yes, he should have been on the show, but I felt he was yeah. a very responsive governor. Yeah. But what I see when I stay among the people I stay, and we are who we are. So we are, I, am, I am Isako. Somebody else is Igbo. Somebody else is Yoruba. We are who we are. And we would always carry our sentiments with us. You know? But what is the truth? You can't dispute that one. Mm. So if you, if you want to hate a person, you yes. would see the truth and you must Even though we're beefing, you yes. know that he was working. say the truth. truth. Yes. Let's, so, talk about, let's talk about the thoughts. Please give him his credit. Let's talk about that for a moment, because... That's, that's the reality. And, and I mean, there are other things that we'll discuss a bit later, but we all saw a lot of um, suppression, intimidation, as I said, not just in Lagos, across, mm -hmm. across, the, across, across the country. The country. Yeah. You know, what do you think the government, the new government across the country can do to tame this community of young men? Because whether we like it or not, they are Nigerians and they also live and breathe. They work in this same state and all of us. So as much as we like to push them, like, oh, I beg those people, those, they are not those people. They are part and parcel of each of our states. So what do we do, therefore, do, what do we advise the, the governments doing where these people are properly um, engaged in a way that we don't continue to fester this, nar this narrative, this divisive um, narrative across the nation? It's hard to know how you and I can have a conversation. You might be Igbo, you might be Yoruba, you might be... And we can, talk, we can argue, we can debate. After that, we can still have a drink and hang out because we understand that it's beyond that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it is difficult to get some of these people to have that conversation become, and still be civil. Yeah. It does not so, become a desperate conversation. Yeah, so a, how do we get them to that point where they can respect each other without causing intimidation and oppression it, across? It's unfortunate that the political class have identified these people and have decided to use them as mercenaries, yes. decided to use them as tools mm. against the masses for their own personal interests. Mm -hmm. It's very unfortunate. And um, we can do little mm. except identify those ones around us and find a way to empower them. If the government is actually working for us, they, sh they know these people because they use these people, they empower them with everything during the elections, they should identify them and put up a place to empower them. If these people are not empowered, they will also be used for little amount of money to keep disrupting. And the truth of the matter is they have the numbers, they have nothing to lose. They are the ones who can easily carry out violence and disrupt what we can logically access. Mm. So they have more of the power to elect for us compared to those of us who can mm -hmm. logically reason out <laughs> ideas and say, okay, this person will do the work and this person will not. They will just move according to their stomach infrastructure. And that's what the uh, politicians have been capitalizing on. There's something that they do, ARA, started up uh, something for mm -hmm. the good boys of Lagos, mm -hmm. to bring them in, harness their talent and all of that. A lot more people can get into that space, find a way to remove these people from the streets, empower them, give them something to look forward to. So that when this 5K, 20K, 50K, 100K to go and destabilize elections come up, they know that, no, I'm better than this. I have a job, mm -hmm. I have a business, mm -hmm. I cannot be used. You, where are your own children? Right. Send your children to go and do the dirty work because your children are actually yeah. abroad. Let so we, not mm -hmm. just the government now, but we can begin to, in our areas, identify them and find, we can work together as a group. Maybe civil societies, these are some of the things I expect them to be doing right. 
in taking these people up the streets. All right, let me take this call from Yakub. Good morning, Yakub. Are you there? Good morning, sir. I don't know if my line is clear this morning. And just yesterday, you said you didn't hear me or something. Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, fine. Thank you very much. Before I talk uh, about the uh, actual goal of this, let me quickly talk about the Bali Gossip Government. What is the government that's close to us? Yes. Uh, as, a, as a party man, even though, even though some of us uh, we are playing our role without knowing from attending their party uh, meetings, but in our own quality, we know how we can play. But what can make it difficult for us this time around? Now that a lot of believe that their post is country, I don't know moral, maybe you are hearing me, I don't know. Yes, go ahead, so, very clearly. A lot of people know that their post is now country. Do you think make it difficult for us this time around? One. I want uh, Governor Sanwolo to do this thing. Number one is to give a, a good form, a good reform to NURPW. That's number one. Because the mode of the operation makes it difficult to campaign in support of the government of the day. That is number one. Number two, the tax box aspect of black man needs, needs also to be reformed because you need to work. They work as city fast. Morayo, I can tell you these people are moving without. So those two areas is, is very, very important thing for the governor so will you, to work on. I will say that when I'm talking about that George Bala and then I'm a to move and then governor all these can become a senior president. Yes, I totally agree with his and my wife. Why? Because during the campaign, during the people the party, after I George Bala and then who won that primary. It is only go, uh, all people start to come out that if our party wants to win this election, I try to make you look for both of Muslim, Muslim tickets, and then it's time to do So if you look at the South East now, all uh, uh, people start to the most ranking senator from that very particular place, and then if the court, uh, uh, our, our elected uh, president is a Muslim, the first president elect is a Muslim, now we cannot go either way around to one pick another Muslim. Thank you very much. We're going to go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing lessons learned and how governors elected can move forward. We focus a bit on Lagos State because we know we live here. However, it's important to note that violence and ethnic politics played out across the country. Yes. Yes. And it's important for us to also highlight all the other areas where ethnic politics was displayed, which we hope would never happen again and we can begin to move forward from it. What are the states? I know that I know Kano, for example. Mm. Okay, no, it's, it's, I want to start with play two. It's the Godfather thing that uh, played out. Think okay, yeah, no, no, I, I was just going to say that Kano State, um, the the elections, how it went, we saw that we saw it was quite it dramatic. It was quite interesting. Yes, uh, people always say, when people always say, oh, the North, they know how to play this game better, they understand politics better. I think that little clip that we saw explain to Nigerians what people are saying. It's just not in the... Because when people talk about the North, they think it's because they, are, they give birth to so many children. That's why they are better <laughs> at it. But you see that they defend their vote. They follow it to the very end. And if they are certain about a particular candidate, they come out for that candidate. So um, APC being the incumbent, and everybody thought that they would be back. But the people of Kano State said no. They gave one million We are going back to NMPP. To and they were able to you know, get themselves. Yes, that they supported the person that they wanted. And for me, that's also what happened in Plateau State. During the presidential elections, they voted massively for LP. Mm -hmm. But when it came to governorship. the governorship election, they voted massively for PDP. Mm. Because I think people are saying to themselves, it's about the person. Mm. Mm. The person that represents Not us party. best. Party. And for us in Plateau State, we believe that this person in PDP is going to represent our interests better 
than the APC that has been there. And uh, even though we supported the LP um, picture, the, the big picture, but we don't think that the LP is strong enough or, you know, the person that was there is the person that will represent us well. So Nigerians, that's why I feel that Niger the Nigerian electorate is more is more educated, more mm -hmm. exposed, and more in tune with mm -hmm. what their rights are and what they want from leaders. Let me take this call and I'll come back to you. Good morning. Are you there? Good morning. Engineer Good Ibrahim, morning. go ahead. You're live. Uh, uh, actually, I like the way the president-elect spoke yesterday by trying to calm us down and all that. Uh, we pray that the Nigerians we listen. Uh, <laughs> so I hope we will listen. Because if we don't support the president elect or any president, there is no way even if he performs without the general final results, he didn't do well. Like this current president, I could see from many quarters, you know, <laughs> a lot of hate, a lot of criticism. So negative criticism, even when he did some things right. So that did not give room for us to really genuinely, you know, even our media. So really genuinely critique the president. Because when there are so much baseless uh, criticism thrown at him, when the genuine one comes, they will just say, I want one of those things. So I think we, we, we need to change the way, even we criticize government. For instance, the governor saw who he did well. Yeah, we saw that he did well. But because of the answer issue, uh, we call the army, we call the and he used that way just again, you know, demand. Thank you, <laughs> Brian. Like, oh, he Thank has done this year. Thank you, Ibrahim. So he brought that up, and I think I think it's on that time for us to highlight this. The man over and again answered that question. Who gave the order? Who did this? I am not in charge of the I am not in charge of the army. It's because it, that's not my area. He kept saying it. He said it during the uh, during the answers. He said it afterwards, even during the, um, the report, when he came out during the report, even during the campaign, he was asked repeatedly, but nobody was listening. They don't, so no matter that, that, it goes back to, so the one no matter that, how the, many times we answered answer that question, that means this man did not call they wanted, the army, they wanted, but nobody's listening. No, they wanted somebody's head to go for this. Mm. The people shouting and calling out wanted somebody to stone for the answers. Mm. And he was the most engaging governor. In fact, I pitied him. There was this particular engagement that he had with the youth at Alausa and the videos when they popped up, I was like... Remember the Sorosoke? It was the Sorosoke yeah, thing. Yeah. The governor was addressing... He, there was one at the Lekki Toll Gate he was addressing and they were stoning pure water. Mm. There was one at the Alausa he was addressing. I was like, other governors in other states, nobody has come out to talk to their people. It, it, the answers thing started from Delta State. The Delta governor that was running for vice president Not after, sure. he never addressed the youth. The atrocities that happened in Anambra State. The, the, he didn't SARS. address the youth. And so the youth were just like, no, 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 we just must tear so somebody you down. To speak. It was not your own head. They he was engaging them in Alausa and the band played this tune from the video and the crowd took it and, I was like, and, he, was, and he struggled. Mm. I saw him, I was like, no, no. Mm. Then when I go to America, we say, God bless America. This same new tone, I then gave his a pass. Jackpot, jackpot, jackpot. They'll go there, they'll behave well. You know, I was just like, no, now yeah. let him talk. And then we, the worst we were fearing now happened. I knew nobody would listen again. I personally felt, don't talk. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, right. let the yeah. results of uh, uh, the panel report or whatever investigations come out. Because there's nothing you can say that yeah. will change these people's mind. That's yeah. the way I felt about it. So but that... I wanted to quickly address the issue of thuggery. You know, uh, BC had said that, you know, the politicians use the thugs. But we are past where the politicians use the thugs on the polls. They use them for thuggery clearly. So for justice to happen, arrest the thug and their sponsors is easy now. Mm -hmm. Because now, if you are not accredited, you can, your, your vote now, only one vote could determine yeah. who. Yeah. No talks it's can come good. and come and multiply votes. The Beavers, the, uh, the election petition in uh, Oshu has shown us that if anybody has the powers to, to abuse the Beavers, he can stand the chance of losing his elections. The result, if you read the report of that election tribunal, I have an opportunity to read it. I was shocked. At, uh, so this is how Beavers even exposed a party yeah, that, right. that was That's the why winner. intimidation. Instead, because so, they can't work so with they, they, yes, So they, that they, intimidation they, and thuggery yes. was well highlighted. Some people caught theirs on camera. Some people, you know, yeah. and every form of crime that happened during the election was well covered under the electorate. Let the law take its course. Yes. Let's have people escape
parade goes. Yes. The way we parade small, small boys for Yahoo business yes. as, as yes, parade yes, to do. Yes. Let's parade people for Togri and yes. intimidation. Let me take this call from Hassan. Good morning, Hassan. Are you there? Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Please, I would like to correct that last question about this entrance matter. Look, the entrance issue, I live in the middle of Lekki. I was there last and direct. I saw what happened. The problem of entrance is the problem of youth with the Nigeria police. And Nigeria police is not never the police. So, the... Oh. We, got, we lost Hassan. There was a point that you raised that I thought was also important, that we are now voting for people, mm -hmm. not the party. Mm -hmm. Is that what we want? Is that the ideal? Because when we try to also look at other countries where they believe in the ethos and the, uh, the ideology of, the of a party. Mm -hmm. And they, no matter who is there, yeah. the Democrat says, I am a Democrat because I trust mm -hmm. that the Democrats have selected this leader. Mm -hmm. The same way, Man United, is not because Messi leaves Man U to one, one place. You I'm not going to go and follow job. Messi. Mm -hmm. I'm following Man United. So, yeah. is that the kind of politics we want in Nigeria where we are focused on the person and not the party? Is it that our parties so, have not mm -hmm. been able to get us yeah. to uh, follow them individually? So, the thing is, um, our type of politics is not ideology based. Yep. We haven't gotten there yet. And I don't know if we have any plans of getting there. And that's why even the politicians themselves can cross carpet easily. Once this one, I'm not able to get my interest here, I can quickly move to APC. APC not satisfy me, I find LP. LP not satisfy me, I go to PDP, you know? Because there are no clear cut ideologies. Now, the political parties need to start working on their ideologies if they want to institute party, proper party politics like you mentioned. So if I belong to APC, for instance, no matter who comes under the platform of APC, I will vote APC because I know that they have a structural ideology that anybody who sits in position of power will follow through. Do you understand? But we don't have that in Nigeria. So people are saying, I follow this party, I follow this party, I've seen what they have done over the years. They've not impressed me. Instead of sticking to this political party, why don't I find a candidate that I believe in? And also understand that a lot of us are not partisan. So some people have political parties that they belong to. Mm. Most of the electorates don't have. We're ordinary citizens who just want a better Nigeria. So it's easier for us to pick a candidate who we believe in. That's so the party. political party needs to do a lot more mm. if they want to have this strength of man, you, and... Uh, <laughs> All right, let me, you know, let me, let me ask you this call because APCs will tell you that they are progressives. Which and they want to, they and want the to move thing. to... The, that, 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 that's probably the ideo ideology. Yeah, but let me take this, um, Paul. Ideology. Dario, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I'm a first-time partner. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you very much. I just want to especially to the one uh, this lady that asked me a question now, said about Yoruba and Yibo in Lagos, asking uh, Governor Saulu to go and apologize to Yibo in Lagos. Yibo actually... Okay, I guess with the, with the lines are having issues. Yeah. So, but yes. with the, so some will argue, well, we'll come, we'll come back to the other, but let me let you... Yes, yeah, so I was just wanted to say, okay, we also even need to look at in Nigeria, I think at the presidential elections, it plays out differently. Um, presidential elections, I think people go for party. <laughs> but regional elections, state elections, people go for persons. Because for me, people, now rea people are able to point out these people as, because this is grassroots, as those who represent them best. As the one, ah, we know this one now, he works for us. But if you are in, let's say, Kebi State, and Peter Obi is running, as, as Peter Obi was running, you don't really get to know much about Peter, especially with the way we play politics in Nigeria, where we only show up during election period. So you cannot really say, oh, this is the person of Peter Obi, or this is the person of, uh, kind of person of Tinubu. But what are people saying about this party? So you got that wave of, this is a new party, different from the rest. Meanwhile, I'm like, okay, it's true. The ones that have been voting before, they have not made a difference. So there's someone different. Mm. At the presidential level, you would see Nigerians vote along party lines. That's what I, what I think. But at the regional level, they know mm. you and what you've done, what you've done. So it's easier for them to go with the person. But if we say that, even when we talk about American politics and how they have party, and just like BC said, it's more ideology-based. Ideology 
But I have seen during the Trump mm -hmm. era where Republicans were saying they are like old school Republicans and not new school Republicans because Trump was bringing a part of um, um, politics they didn't like, which was sort of inciting that division between what they call the regular America or the real Americans versus the no, no, yeah you know the non -re the ones that are not real. And you had even in that Republican mm -hmm. that people had always they would say they were not you know they were different from that. Democrats too would say yes I'm a, I'm a Democrat but I don't like these new issues that they liberal are pushing ahead. Yes, this liberal, uh, the transgender agenda, the gay agenda, it's not in keeping with my own Christian values, even though I'm a Democrat. So we would see that. And because our country too were building and forming, you know, this ideology, we'll someday get there. But I feel that we should never lose the fact that a person who can best represent us, no matter the party, is who we should always go for. All right, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we take a few more calls. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing all the events that happened. Mm -hmm. And we have our correspondent, Mian Akiri from Enugu State. He's right there to give us an update. Good morning, Mian. Are you there? Good morning to you, Murayo. Yes, I can hear you very clear. Fantastic. So let's get some updates in Enugu. We know that's one of the places where there's been quite a lot of um, issues in getting the results. There's been a lot of protests going on the streets. People are angry. <laughs> and now we hear that the collation officer would return at 5 p.m. to announce the results. Give, give us an idea of what happened in Enugu. Enugu. Well, um, on Saturday, residents in Enugu State took to the polls, and um, uh, on Sunday, um, when at the state coalition center, while coalition was ongoing, um, there were issues with two local governments out of the 17 local governments in Enugu State, and um, those two local governments are in Kano East and Unsuka. Um, there were allegations from party agents are drift at this point that. Um, there were evidences of overvoting in in Kano East, and um, this led to the re re um, uh, um, the residing officer there um, trying to um, listen to the aggrieved party members, and then um, Professor Foy we um, postponed every other event to Monday because of um, the evidence and that was brought before him and also uh, petitions from uh, other political um, parties uh, in the state. And um, as of um, Tuesday, it was a um, protest across um, in the state, but we just um, got the information from the Independent National Electoral Commission here in Enugu that by 5 p.m. there would be a continuation of the review of these two local governments, um, Unsuka and um, in Kano East. So for residents, the waiting game may be almost over if um, they would indeed uh, be declaring um, a winner. But we will indeed be in Enugu to indeed bring our viewers up to speed on what the decision will be from INEC. Um, earlier, they had said they would review the two local governments, and um, we hope that the review is done by now. But then it is certain that at the state quality center, the returning officer will be there, and then we will get to know if um, there would be a declaration for a winner in right. the states. Mian, can you tell us the temperature of the environment right now? How, how peaceful, how safe is it looking? What? Well, I wouldn't say Enugu State is um, totally peaceful at this point, although um, I've seen peaceful protesters. And um, one thing I've noticed, you know, from other states across the country, um, if care wasn't taken, um, if um, security operatives are not on top of their game, I fear there could be um, a continuation of what would have been uh, what the answers that was um, seen in other parts of the state. Why? Because we saw 
different political party supporters across different places in the state collating center. And um, if care wasn't taken, there could be a clash. That has not happened. And what they were saying, uh, a particular group was saying that since INEC had um, completed collating the 17 local governments, they should indeed declare a winner. And if there are, if there are any agreed political parties, they can indeed go to the courts, stating that um, the state quality center is not um, uh, the law courts where you demand for justice. Right. And then um, some other parties are saying that uh, they are quite comfortable with what the returning officer is doing, that they have confidence in the Independent National Electoral Commission in the state. But um, at this point, with the decision that um, INEC will be sitting today by 5 p.m., okay. I hope this will bring calm amongst different party members right. who are protesting at the state collating center, right. hoping that this protest does not go beyond what right. we've seen so far, a peaceful protest. Thank you, Miam. I'll let you go at this time. But please be safe. You know, it's December. You know, you can never be too careful. So please ensure your safety at this time. But we'll hope to see you again. 5 p.m. will be tuned to TBC News to get the updates. Let's go to break. No, not a break. Let me come back to the ladies. So. Now, so that is Enugu. We've discussed a bit about Kano. We've discussed about Lagos State. What are the states do you think that there needs to be some kind of recon reconciliation? Okay. People need to start talking. The governor elected must begin to work towards reconciliation. I do. I, do. I don't want <laughs> you talking about Enugu. We had the acts of assembly elections. <laughs> okay. Yes. And we saw Bola snatching in Edo as well. In fact, in um, I think it was somewhere in Benin where we saw the videos where somebody snatched ballot and the other person snatched the person that snatched ballot box. <laughs> and then that one was able to slip away and he was running That's off. Amazing. But in Isako West, in the collation center, I have videos coming from the village where the deputy governor of the Edo State led his entourage in his black cars to collation centers. And then his thugs attacked um, opposition in their, in their campaigns. These are, these are strong allegations. I have videos. Be careful. And I, have, I know the personalities in question. So the deputy governor can answer if he did not do those things. And there are so Allegedly. many petitions happening. So I'm not talking something I'm afraid to talk. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> we can, when we talk about Togri, and we talk about Togri in the worst form, that's when you see a sitting governor. We know Governor Sonolu did not have a, he did not personally shop at anybody's collation center. Yeah. Throughout the election, he did his vote. He went to his house. Yeah. He sat at his house and his uh, 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 situation rep yeah. uh, report room and he followed elections. But what I saw in Edo, how far for me. Yeah? You know, the kind of things that we're seeing. I did not expect that when there's no, uh, there's no uh, 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 issue happening, the deputy governor comes and then the people are now trying to def defend their vote against the executive who should be ensuring that there's peace at law and order. You know, so okay. some of these issues also played out across con the country. We have issues happening from river states as well. Let me ask us about, because you know me, I always bring it back to the people. Yeah. There's, one, there's, the, there's one part of government, mm -hmm. because the government is a 0.0% .0 or even 1%, let's just yeah. say 1%. Mm -hmm. But we, the people, are responsible for our democracy. Yes, we are. It is us that will determine if this democracy would function or not. Or not. So exactly. therefore, where do we then whole take responsibility for our own part in this. Where some of us are saying, oh, government should come apologize to somebody. Or the, on what basis should an executive apologize to before? What exactly? Mm -hmm. we, in, in some, I'm, not, I'm not talking about Lagos State. I'm talking about other states where we're saying, oh, is it, the, is it the politicians? They are fueled these ethnic sentiments that we are, or with the people, people are the ones feel. fueling it. So did the politicians say, OK, oh, Please, though, uh, for you to vote on Saturday, oh, you must vote me because I'm a, a Yoruba man. You must vote me because I'm a, from a, I'm an Edo man. I'm an Ashikiri man. Did the politicians come out and say that? Or oh, we are the ones amongst ourselves telling each other, oh, using those true. ethnic rhetoric. Again, so riot. we also oh, must yes. take responsibility our yes. own part in this. I agree with you. Yeah. Everybody must take responsibility. But there's what they call seed sowing. Mm. And the politicians understand the vulnerabilities of us as a nation. Mm. We are very vulnerable. A lot do not believe this is one Nigeria. That's a vulnerability that anybody can latch onto and expand it. And then people are now, you know, remembering my forefather, my grandfather, this happened to them when they went to this place, they married and it didn't work out. And people start digging up memories, traumatic experiences 
that happened to them. And so it, we feel it. So why we have a responsibility not to extend it? That's because we are aware and that's because we have separated our emotions or whatever stories our parents have told us. Now we are focusing on objectivity and what we want moving forward. Not everybody is in that level. And that's why the leaders must be very careful. The seeds that they sow, they understand where we are. As delicate as we are, they understand it. Even in form still today, they will ask you state of origin. Mm. We are still a divided people in our hearts. It's just a few of us that I say, okay, one Nigeria, one Nigeria. We are not strong in that. So you must take responsibility as a leader. It's like a, a parent or a, a father who will sow seeds of discord among the children and then go sit back and watch the children fight. And then you say, ah, you people are children. You must take responsibility. Mm. It starts from somewhere. So you do your part. I understand that it's politics and you want to get all the votes and you can do whatever it takes to get all the votes, but you must take responsibility in that part. Mm. And then when we here, we have a responsibility to also talk to those people who are not at our level, mm. to begin to see beyond what these politicians are doing and using us to do. Mm. Let me go yeah, and break. I, okay. I have to come. When I come back, I like the state of origin part. We'll, we'll hop on that when we come back. Stay with us right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still having this conversation. And this is something I'd like to take further. Well, let us um, unbundle a bit. You said something about one Nigeria. And I think it's something we need <coughs> to define and discuss. What does one Nigeria mean? Mm. Because me, I think one Nigeria means different things to different people. So maybe if we have a better understanding of what one Nigeria means, maybe people can then realize and respect our differences. Because some people might say one Nigeria, could, not, could one Nigeria be the fact that a Yoruba person can go to Kaduna, own a store, have a business, or have a community, or a Igbo person can go to one Benue state and have a supermarket and do, you know, is that, is, is, is that, what we, is that one Nigeria now? Or could one Nigeria be where, even if I am Yoruba, I can be, I can, I can be the governor of Kaduna state? Is that the one Nigeria we're looking for? Because if we look at it in different ways, in the all of us are always references, US and all these other countries. In America, America is one country. But within that America, we have the black Americans, the Asian Americans, mm -hmm. the Hispanic Americans. There are various groups where they are in, everybody appreciates that we are Americans, but we have our communities and we respect our communities. This is the way Asians are, these are where Chinese are, but we still Americans. This all the we all the, the rights to an American citizen still apply to each of them, but they are different. And if we define our own Nigerianness about like that, such that you can be an Ishakiri Nigerian, you can be a Plato, I mean, what's your own culture? Your, what's your own? <laughs> you know, you are a, a Do Nigerian, <laughs> you're Yoruba Nigerian. And you know, if we respect that, that that's who we are, and don't try to blur that. Keep that oneness based on our tribe and respect it. Everybody now knows that we all have tribes and we respect that. Maybe if we redefine it to be like that, people can say, okay, I, I am represented. But when we give it just all, oh, we're all just Nigerians. They're now almost blurring the line of traditional and individuality as a person. Am I, am I making sense or have I lost you? So we all commonly own the federal. Mm -hmm. We don't all commonly own the the subnationals, we mm -hmm. cannot pretend. Mm -hmm. So what we see played out here, and I'm saying it very carefully in Lagos, is that we want to all own Lagos. the subnational. And so there was a disrespect of the host. Mm. There was an affront on the face of the host. There was, you know, and so that just sort of brought out so many devils, left, right, and center. And somebody gave me the example that the mayor of London is Pakistani. I said, oh, welcome. Did that country not colonize the US? When did they get independence? How old is the U.S. Constitution compared to us? Can you wait the time for us to evolve mm. to, to that mm. to that level? Can so we it's evolve? A process. It's a process. It's, process. Yeah. it's not immediate. So it's my not grandchildren the... may actually be a witness. Barack Obama a, waited a that many years. 
a northern governor of Lagos State. Yes. Very possible. Yes. possible. My grandchildren, yes. would, but we will well, evolve in into that. Yes. Mm. So I picked the Yoruba language in university perfectly because I thought it's the language of where I lived. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be included, you cannot be a stranger to the language of communication where you live. Mm. I stayed a few years, a few months in Abuja. I did not pick Hausa. Mm. But we see a full adult who cannot speak a word of the history that does not know and love. I, the way I know the history of Lagos and love it. Mm. I repeating myself sometimes. Say, Don't forget the one from Edo that you had to from? learn. <laughs> because I had to learn it living in Lagos. Mm. And that respect is what I want. In every state that you'll be resident in, do not affront or confront the history of the people there. Mm. Mm. A time will come, we will evolve to that point where yeah. it will be a normal thing for a president or the uh, councillor of whatever of London to be Pakistani. Yeah. Do you want to trace the history of the Pakistanis in London? Mm. It goes back centuries. Mm -hmm. Sister, tell them. How old is this independence we are talking about? Mm -hmm. By the time I was in primary school, the teacher that was teaching us Igbo, she came from far east. It was conk. We couldn't assimilate. Mm. The one that taught us in secondary school in command said nobody went to her class. That's the truth because we have not evolved there. Yeah. But a time will come. We will have a common African mm. like they do in South Africa. We will yeah. evolve there. Yeah. It will become natural. Yeah. This aggression, we don't need it. Exactly. So I, as an Edo person, I've been approached a lot of times. Ah, Nima, go and get a party ticket. Mm. Contest for something and I will smile. I was even having that conversation over the weekend with my husband that if I don't go home, being brought up and over 35 years old before I visited the village again after I was three years, if I don't go, go home, and meet my cousins. There's no point because even the people I don't be like, ah, she just they come from Lagos. There's yeah. always going to be that That's that uh, action. This one that their father we were telling him to bring these children back home, and they were, mm. and they not minding the fact that I speak a circle language very well mm. to the point of mm. proverbs. They will still bring the different conch accents mm. within the twelve. Uh, uh, is it twelve or nine uh, different circle languages? Mm. And it will still be a barrier. Mm. So but let us evolve, evolve yeah, to that point that, where yeah. we would easily accept, right. not aggress. So I, I love yeah. how you have broken it down. Mm. It's a, pro a process. We must get there gradually, right? But everything starts with a mindset. Mm. And we're not saying throw away history mm. or forget the locals of the land. You must respect the locals of the land. But in your mindset, you are first a Nigerian before your tribes person. So it's just replacing, putting in place, in perspective. That's, is that not a parity. denial statement? No, 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 it's not a it's, denial it, statement. It, it, yeah. so, I've heard it a lot of times. No, listen, listen, now, now, listen no, first. It's not a denial. There's what they call assimilation. So if, for example, you have moved, your parents had moved from your land, and you were born and brought up, and all you know is that particular land you are saying. Mm. We're saying that the uh, constitution should assimilate you into that land because That's you it. have moved. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. And when we are presenting ourselves, when it comes to the interest of how we're going to, you know, do our resources to help one another, we're presenting ourselves on the outside. We're going to have a collective putting of Nigeria first before who you are. Mm. So let me give you an example. Somebody made a post on social media recently, and then um, her child, who used to attend a pure white school, uh, finally had another student who was black who came to the school. And then they now started talking. How are you doing? Where are you from? I'm Nigerian. I'm Nigerian. Uh, what part of Nigeria are you from? He says, I'm Igbo. I'm from Yoruba. And the child says, so I'm supposed to hate you now. Mm. So they're outside their country, mm. but there's still division even in the outside. Mm. No, we, no matter where you see an American mm. outside his country, mm. an American we present first, I am an American. Mm. It's when you now get very close, you start, okay, I came from Kansas. That's the evolution. Here, That's the evolution. Came, talk about. Get, but we will start mm. building on the mindset mm. and assimilating not one killing another. ourselves for the journey not killing ourselves for the journey so, and not, I, okay. and not, the, and not mm. um, disrespecting mm. the land that you come from trying to mm. cover their history mm. because you amalgamated or migrated okay. there okay I'll, I'll come back yeah, for example you, you made a point but I think you just you use that point to generalize and I don't think it's a fair generalization I think many Nigerians that live outside of Nigeria see themselves first as Nigerians in fact I had a conversation with a Nigerian that's lived in America or you know, most of his life, and he was talking about the obedient movement that started in America and all the rallies that they went, and it did not matter which part of Nigeria they were from. He said they were all there together. So many Nigerians see themselves that way. And that's why this rhetoric that happened during the governorship election sort of shocked them, because they don't see Nigeria that way anymore. 
that was just an example so. that may have happened, yeah. but I don't think that is a, General. a full picture of how we see ourselves out there. Now, you see this conversation people are having. There's nobody better than me on this table <laughs> to explain to you people the dynamics of state of origin or no state of origin. And I'm, I've been thinking of the politically correct way to talk about this. So plateau state, there's always been a tension. You've heard of different issues that go on there, the fights that have gone on there. But we have indigenous people from plateau state who have looked at it somehow and feel that there are people who are coming from the far north and coming into plateau state and, and making it their state. Mm to the point that they are pushing for some offices and things. Mm. So this is something that they are constantly Very fighting familiar. against. You know? And even in the person that they have picked as governor right now, is because the indigenous people feel that this is the person that understands Christians. us as indigenous. Yeah. It's not even, it's beyond Christianity. There Clo is, uh, that's there's, there's Christianity, but there's also the yeah. fact that mm. we are from, like people who say son of the uh, yeah. soil. Son soil. of the soil. Yes, so closest. there are some people that are, from there indigenously, and then there are people that are settlers. And indigenous people feel that the settlers do not show respect to history, as we've explained. Now, we now have these settlers who live in Lagos and sort of understand that they are settlers and they are guests in Lagos. So people in Plato say, so you understand these dynamics of coming to someone's state and, be, and knowing that I'm a guest or I'm a settler and I respect the history there. So Ido Wakarena, like, so is it that you disrespect us that you feel that this, you know, so it's not a politically correct conversation yeah. to have. I feel so that there's a different that is why to I have think this I'll, I'll go back to the evolution you said. Mm -hmm. Because we, as we are hearing these conversations, mm -hmm. the truth is that we are not first Nigerians. We are first where we are from. That's the truth. Let us not deny it. Yes. It would be, the, 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 it would be yes. nice yes. to be first a Nigerian. But in our hearts, the truth is that we are inside from where we are from. Mm -hmm. And, and what you want we, a one so, Nigerian. No, so no, no. Yes, so that's yeah, why we have to, that is that's nice. why we have to no, define what a one Nigerian means. You have to pick one Nigerian means as a, as a black American. I can be one black American, but I can also, once I enter a Bronx, for example, I know that this is my area. Mm -hmm. I want this, this, I can get African store here. I can get a white person might not come to that African, that, that Bronx area and get caviar, whatever it is they eat. But, but knows that in this area, oh, this is where the black community lives. And I respect that. Mm -hmm. I want to say, oh, because I am this, I want to take on those. That's what I'm saying. saying that you're first Amer American, yes, but you also respect your heritage. The problem that saying, is when it gets to leadership, mm -hmm. people will put their tribes first before the country. And they want to represent. Today. No, listen now. Listen now. Mm -hmm. I'm just, uh, uh, mm -hmm. we are all I, I'm entitled to my own Absolutely. opinion. That's why I'm on this table, to share it how I see it, from my lenses and my perspective. The mindset of I am first an Igbo person or I am first a Yoruba girl and I get into a, a leadership authority mm. will mean I will be projecting first the interest of my tribes against the whole of Nigeria. Mm. That is what plays out. Mm. And I'm saying there's a way we can begin to change this mindset. Mm. I'm not saying be first a Nigerian and forget your heritage. Mm. Of course not. Yeah. You should have your language. You should know where you're from. You should uphold your culture. But when it comes to presenting um, the interests Absolutely. of the country must come first before. Mm. And that is how we can begin to evolve. That's the evolve, yeah. you know. Yeah. We cannot sit on one mindset and say we will evolve into yeah. that. Wait. We need to start having that conversation. Mm. Of, okay, as a Nigerian, am I first a Nigerian? Yeah. Before I am my tribe's person. Mm. Absolutely. Or am I first my tribe's person? Because this the truth is, is the mindset, yeah. if it's not corrected, yeah. will keep us revolving around. And that's Absolutely. why people say, why don't we go back to the regions? Mm. Where people say, okay, this is my region, Eastern mm. region, uh, Western region, uh, um, uh, so Northern so region. We, so the listen, we have to wrap up. We have, we have, we have, we've also seen when Buhari became president, we were not all accused of nepotism. Yeah. We are not there yet. It was obvious. But we, even Jonathan came. We all accused him. That is what so, it, so the point is, as a nation, we are still work in progress. We will get to the point where so I, I can put a, a, a one, one, one ethnic group here and ensure and trust him that he will share right. the position me, across the nation. Right. But we're not there yet. Let me tell you. you I, think the ang I think the conversation and the anger really for a lot of Nigerians is what they will say, hypocritical outrage mm -hmm. as far as they are concerned. So you're in a particular region and you're shouting and screaming, why, we are, why is it that I've lived here for 10 years, for 15 years, and you don't see me as one? But where you originally come from, that person dare not.
So who are you? What gives you this moral justice? Yeah, so yeah, I'm just saying, so there's a hypocrisy. Yes, that's when, the when outrage. Now that I said, we, are, we all own Nigeria. It's a different thing when you're aspiring for presidency, but it's a totally when different leadership. argument when you're talking about governorship. Yes. That you have lived for it with the people for long. Does it make you have their interest in their subnational enough? Mm. Mm. We will right. evolve and get there. By the time it is normal for one Nigerian to cross to any part of the country and own his businesses and even be able to still project it back home, it will be normal then for presidents and, uh, king, uh, and governors to come out from any region. Mm. This thing but basically is saying, we are forced, That's sadly, I, mean. I remember when I was sadly. entering primary school, we are forced from our regions before mm. we are Nigerians. That's the honest, that, if we don't want to be in denial right now. That's what it's But those of us that have traveled abroad, they don't see that anymore because they've now lived in a country where it is them. The legislators so they don't see what we, what, those time, of us that live in Nigeria, they don't see that anymore. See, yeah. the legislators at that time normalized state of origin. We accepted it. Yeah, it is now we are saying remove it because some people are now seeing the dangers of it. We will get there. It will yes. take time. But all right, that is all we can take on the show. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye for now. Ladies of your...